saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground.
all sing the calm sea with Jesus. All the disciples were getting concerned. The wind started violently blowing, but he was asleep in the stern. Does he not care that we perish? We're helpless and we're so afraid. Oh, but Jesus arose when they called him and said to them, Where is your faith? Because you prayed all night. Because you held on with all of your might. Child, your cries have okay. The master. Oh, he knows your voice. Lift your hands, it's time to rejoice. Child, your cries have opened the master. It hit you without any warning. The storm of your life had begun, but seeing no hope in the distance, you're frightened and nowhere to run. Oh, by now your vessel is filling, and you're thinking that you'll surely drown. Oh, you cried out for help from the Savior, and you know you can't give up now because you prayed all night, because you held on with all of your might. Child, your cries have awoken the Master. Oh, He knows your voice. Lift your hands, it's time to rejoice. Child, your cries have awoken the Master. You're up there worried, He's fast asleep. The winds are so deadly, the water's so deep. Try to be patient, cause soon he'll bring peace. Just one word from his voice, and it all must cease. Because you prayed all night, because you held on with all of your might. Well, child, your cries have awoken the master. Because you prayed all night, cause you held on with all of your might, child, your cries have awoken the master. Lift your hands, it's time to rejoice. Child, your cries have awoken the master.
Will there be a next time when I need some mercy? Will grace be sufficient? Oh, how will I know the next time my heart is broken? Well, did he comfort Elijah? Was David a part of this promise to me? Did God's son rise out of Judah? And did he walk up Golgotha? The past hope the power of His promise to me. Oh, I just go back to the moment that He saved me. I just go Bibles up, if you will, in Matthew chapter number 28, Matthew chapter number 28, Matthew chapter number Matthew chapter number 28, without any doubt or any question this morning, is a very familiar chapter. We know Matthew 28 simply because of the Great Commission. It's a popular chapter that many of us have quoted, especially when we think of missions and we talk about these things. It's something that really at times can even be repetitive. Maybe you and I have read this on a regular basis. I know that within my own life, especially over the last few years of Missions Minded, it's been understanding the heartbeat of the local church, what God wants. And it's so easy to be able to come to a text like that, very similar to John chapter number 3, 
we all can quote verse number 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we, we almost feel like sometimes that there's nothing in it that's new, that's relevant for us. I must say, and I must confess, I've been guilty of that many a times, not once, not twice, but many times. And that too has also happened with Matthew chapter number 28. But the truth be told is what I really need is this. Is I need for God to connect His truth. For Him to be able to teach me some things. So for you and I to be able to get that, I have to approach the Bible with a fresh mind and a fresh view. For God to be able to reveal what the Lord wants to be able to reveal so we can see some things. And I'm interested in the entire chapter. The last chapter of this book, but I really want to start with the first six verses. I want you to follow along with me, if you will. The Bible says in verse number one, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven And came and rolled back the stone from the door. Set upon it. His countenance was like lightning. And his raiment white as snow. As for fear of him the keepers did shake. And became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women. Fear not ye. For I know that ye seek Jesus. Which was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. As he said. Come see the place. Where the Lord lay. How many of you thankful you serve a risen Savior? Say amen. I'm interested in the first verse of this chapter. If you notice if you will. That it says. In the end of the Sabbath. And then you go a little bit further down. In that first verse. Notice what he says. Toward the first day of the week. Here he is at the end of the end of the week. And he literally says, if you're underlining, you can underline the words the end. And then underline toward the first day of the week. And you look at that and you begin to see. That all of a sudden it seems like it's at the end of the day. Of the end of the week. And it seems like to the disciples it's the very end. Because let me remind you of their journey. Their journey has been a journey that has been something that's very unique. They with their own eyes have been able to see the Lord Jesus. How he has healed folk and helped folk. How he has turned their life around. How he turned water into wine. He made the lame to be able to walk and the blind to be able to see. He fed 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes. And now... They see this man is without any question the Savior. He is the man. There's no question whatsoever that God had sent us to be the substitute. As the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteous of God in him. But the key to it is this. Is that they find themselves now so discouraged. Because this man that they called Jesus, the one that was with all the hope and all the ambition, with all uh, the salvation and everything, literally now it seems to be at a place to where he is no longer with them and he has given his life. And here you see the Sabbath not being the day that you and I think it is, being Sunday, Sabbath being Saturday. It's the last day of the week. But then we use Sunday to come to church. What do we do? We rejoice. We celebrate. Who do we rejoice? Who do we celebrate? The Lord Jesus. So what we do is we come on Sunday to be able to rejoice and to be able to give honor and glory to the one who rose. And because of that, we come and we lift up praise to the Lord Jesus. So what is God trying to teach us that every time it seems to come to the end of something, in reality, it's just the beginning. These disciples, from their earthly eyes, they saw no way out. From their earthly eyes, without faith, it seemed to be the end of the road. It was an experience that had surpassed anything they had ever seen. Can you imagine walking and talking with the Lord Jesus? Now listen, friend, 
I've never physically been able to see him, but coming to church, I've seen God do some things. Man, I've seen God touch some people's lives and turn lives around and save folk and help folk and help marriages. There's been so many times that you and I have been able to get to that mountaintop experience and then all of a sudden it seems like in the middle of it all, it seems like it comes to a dead end and we wonder why in the world it seems to stop. Why in the world has it seemed to struggle and we think it's at a dead end, but the Lord teaches us the same way He taught His disciples. That just because this chapter finishes does not mean there's not another chapter. And just because this mile has been walked does not mean there's not another mile to walk. Listen to me. That just because you rejoiced and seen so many things yesterday, that does not mean that there's not a tomorrow. That song, though I did not ask, the song that I asked for them to sing this morning was, uh, your cries have awoken a master. And the reason was because in my frame of mind, I was sitting there, and that song's been on my heart because he says, it reminds in that song that literally that the Lord, that he knows your voice. He hears your voice. And can I tell you something, as a child of God, that encourages me that when nobody else hears my voice, that I know that my Heavenly Father does. But then they followed it with a song, a song that was on their heart, the past of the promise. And that's exactly what we learn here is that every chapter when it seems to end does not mean it's the final chapter. God always has another chapter. When you come into this text, you begin to see that literally they find themselves and here he is, he's they're, they're finding themselves discouraged and they're finding themselves overwhelmed. They don't know. It even looks like the, the tomb is there and, and, and everything is finished. So they find themselves completely empty and they're wondering why in the world does it seem to be so tough and so hard. And here it was, we lifted up Christ. We believed in Him. But now it seems like it's at a dead end. Is this the end? It cannot be the end. And here's what God is teaching us the same way he taught the disciples is that every moment you and I live, it always leads to another moment. Though it seems like that there's no way out with God, there is always a way out. That one day you might be in the middle of the valley, but there is sure to come a day where you will be on the mountaintop. But as sure as you're on the mountaintop, you rest ashore, there will come a day that you will be back down in the valley. That you might be sitting in the middle of a darkness, and you might not know where there's a way out. But even though you're in darkness, there will come a day where there will be light. But just as sure as you stand in a moment that's full of light, that again you will turn around, and there will be darkness. What God is teaching Teaching us is this very principle is that life is a journey. And so many times we're going to find ourselves not understanding why things happen the way they happen. We're not understanding why things come and why things go and why things turn around, why things seem to stop, why one thing happens that does not make sense, why another thing happens that seems to be out of the ordinary, why it seems like the momentum is with us and then all of a sudden the momentum is against us. And God is teaching us that there is a journey. And on this journey, notice with me if you will, you'll find out that just like they found in Matthew 28, that there are experiences that will come and go. If you read out Matthew 28, you know what you're going to find out, that there's ladies who come. As soon as all that's done, that there's an earth, well, earthquake that begins to happen. And then after the earthquake begins to happen, there's an angel that comes. It seems like one experience after another experience after another experience. And all the experiences, they always change. They always transition. But do you know the one thing that never changed in Matthew chapter number 28? It was the Lord Jesus himself. And along this journey, there will be experiences. You and I will see things. We will face things. We will endure things. We will feel things. We will see God do things that we could not even imagine. But even though it seems like circumstances change and experiences change, you listen to me, don't ever let the devil tell you any different. God will never change. He is always the same. He is always faithful. He is always on time because the Lord knows what's going to happen on the journey and we got to learn to trust him not only do you see that there's experiences but also you realize there's obstacles Matthew chapter number 28 as far as I recall there was a stone that was in front of that that tomb there was an obstacle that was there there was 
seemed to be in a place to where that stone was going to hold them back. There was going to be no way out. There was going to be no way to be able to overcome it. And here the very reason that the stone was the reason why they got discouraged. Have you ever been in a place like that in your life? To where in your mind you felt like, well, as sure as the world, yeah, Jesus is going to come out. But there's no way Jesus can come out of this. There's a stone that's rolled over the grave. And in our mind, we feel like that it's affected God. We feel like our problems have affected God. We feel like our fears have affected God. We feel like our situations have affected God. We feel like the obstacles that we face have affected God. But the truth be told, that though there was a stone that was there, it never affected the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to to know that there's going to be times in your life and in my life in this journey where it seems like something is simply just so impossible. There is no way out. There's no way around it. There's no way through it. There's no way to overcome it. But honey, as long as there's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, things may change. Obstacles may come. But Jesus never stay, never changes. And then there's also emotions. I don't know about you, but I'm an emotional person. When you read Matthew 28, there's a lot of emotions. Oh, man, when they first start off, I mean, Mary and then they become again, they find out they're, they're, they're so, they're torn, they're sideways, they're afraid, they're in a grief, the Bible, when they begin to come to them, then all of a sudden there's joy. You read through Matthew 28, then there's joy. And then all of a sudden you get through that, and then there's questions. And it's like this emotional roller coaster. Here we are on this journey. One moment there's grief and sorrow and pain. But the next moment there's joy. He's risen. He's risen. But the next moment there's questions. It almost feels like the humanity of you is sucked in and sucked out. And sucked in and sucked out. And sucked in and sucked out. And you feel like the, the weight of your family. The weight of what the doctors say. The weight of what the school says. and The weight of what your friends say. And the weight of what your family says. It weighs on you and it presses on you one moment. And it releases the next. And it presses on you one moment. And it releases on the next. And emotions just begin to go back and forth. You're angry. You're frustrated. You're overwhelmed. You're happy. You cry because you're sad. You cry because you're happy. If you're not careful, you listen to me, you'll end up being an emotional Christian. And you'll serve the Lord based on how you feel instead of what you believe and believe by faith. Because I want to remind you of something that I need to be reminded on a regular basis. That emotions change. You be happy one day, sad the next day, lost one day. Found the next day full of grace and mercy and strength and power. Man, you can feel like you're standing up on the front of the boat. And you can see afar off and it's clear skies. You've got no worries. But the very next moment you're hiding in the very back of the ship because you don't know what's going on. But you listen, know that there's storms that come. And it affects you as a human. And it changes your emotion. You feel like you're connected one moment and disconnected another moment. You feel like you understand one moment. But you don't understand the next moment. You feel like you can see everything one moment. But you can't see nothing in the next moment and there's fear that settles in then there's joy that rises up there's happiness one moment then there's sadness one moment there's victory and overcoming one moment then there's depression the next moment and it seems like you toss and turn from one moment to the next moment from the middle of the night to the latter part of the night from the beginning of the day to the end of the day this journey is full of emotions but God never changes Never changes. In this journey, we will face things that are obstacles that we cannot overcome. Situations will change. Circumstances will come and go. And things will happen. And you alone will be for the ride on this emotional roller coaster. But the one thing that remains the same is the Lord Jesus. All through Matthew 28, Jesus never changes. But there's also one other thing that's on this journey. Found verse number 11 through 15. It's enemies. Enemies. Who are your enemies? Well, for those, it was the priests and the scribes. By the way, people that should not have been your enemy. And here they are. They're, they're lying. They're... They're making out like it's absolutely nothing. And 
They're naysayers. Are you understanding? It's people that are coming against what God is trying to do in your life. You want the victory. You want the joy in your home and your ministry and your marriage. You want that satisfaction in your soul that you can trust the Lord and march on and have faith and have confidence. You want all of these things. But yet in the shadow, there are these enemies. But can I tell you something? Nowhere. Nowhere do I see their name. Nowhere to this day do I know who they were. I might know they were scribes. I might know that they were priests that was there. But nowhere do I know their name. But can I tell you about one name that we still hear about on a regular basis? And it's the name above all names. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. What are you saying, Brother Jason? Here's what I'm telling you. Life is a journey. And in this journey, you will have difficulties. You will have enemies. You will have obstacles, you will have emotions, and your life will change. Are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you? It's real, friend. It's real. I mean, these folks see Jesus with their own eyes. And don't you think that if the devil and the flesh can make them doubt what the Lord can do, don't you understand that you and I are no better than they are? We sit back and we doubt. We have this emotional roller coaster. And we go in and we go out. We go in, we go out. We have enemies. We focus on things that we should not focus on. When there's one thing, listen, that never changes. If you hear nothing else I say to you today, listen to that. Your life, your family, your friends, your hope if it's not in Christ. Your peace, if it's not in Christ. Your joy, your satisfaction, your church, your friends, your family, your servants, your preacher, your choir, your ministry. In this journey may change. But there's one, no matter how far you go, no matter how high you get, No matter how lonely you seem or how far you feel in the middle of a crowd where you're lost, listen to me. One person never changes. And it's the Lord Jesus. And I want to tell you based upon experience and not based upon my constant, consistent living. But based upon experience in the Word of God, the same way you found Him faithful the first day you met Him is the way that He will remain faithful to you every day you live for Him. You say, I don't feel that way. Quit asking yourself how it feels. It don't look that way. Quit looking at things from what you see. Well, ain't nobody in my ear telling me it's going to be all right. That's because there's going to be enemies along the way. But there's one that stands true. There's one that's strong. There's one that's above all others. And there's a name that one day that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't lose faith in Christ on this journey. I want to give you a few things that the Lord has shown me. A few truths, notice if you will, three times. He uses a word of explanation. Three times, listen to me. He uses a word of attention. Three times he uses a word that I'm going to show you, that I want to give you some principles on this journey. That he says like this, look at me. In Matthew 28, there's three times that he'll use a word that he'll say, pay attention. I know you're in the middle of doubt, but pay attention. I know you're discouraged, but pay attention. I know you're overwhelmed, maybe frustrated, or you feel abandoned. But the Lord Jesus says, pay attention. And this morning, just for a moment, I wondered if you and I could stop and pay attention. Notice in verse number 6 what the Bible says, if you will. Matthew 28. He says these words. I'm sorry, verse number 7. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Notice these words. And what's that next word? Everybody say behold. 
It's a word of attention. Go down to verse number 9, if you will. And as they went to tell his disciples, what's that next word? Everybody say, behold. He said, there's attention. I need your attention. I, I need you to look at me. I need you to pay attention to what I'm saying to you. And then go down to verse number 20, if you will. He says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo. That word lo means the same as behold. It's, it's a word of explanation. It's a word of attention. Listen. And there's somebody, and I don't know who it may be, but there's somebody that you may be here and you're in this journey. And you might be in a certain place of your life. Maybe it is overwhelmed. Maybe it's frustrated. Maybe you feel like that you've been taken advantage of. Or maybe you've been lied to. You feel like you feel just like the disciples felt. You feel just like the disciples felt. Maybe you were Mary and Mary. And there's grief that's inside of you today. And you don't know how to fix it. You don't know how to overcome it. You don't know how to deal with it. You don't know the next chapter. You don't know the next day. You don't even know if when you lay your head down at night if you're going to be able to sleep the entire night. And the Lord says, if that's you, and you're on this journey living for me, he says, let me have your attention. What does he say when he speaks these words? Notice, if you will, in verse number 7, the first thing he says is this. He said, I want to remind you Notice the Bible says, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, what does he say? Listen to this. He goeth before you. The first thing I'd say to you today on this journey is that the Lord's reminding us that Jesus always goes before you. These disciples, the Bible says, they, he goes before you into Galilee. Listen, they're standing in this place of uncertainty. They thought it was sure. They thought they was right. And they're looking afar off going to Galilee of a place of uncertainty. And they don't know what to expect. They don't know what's around the corner. They don't know what's going to happen. They don't know what the outcome is. They've walked with the Lord Jesus. He's been with them every step of the way. He's proven to be true. And by the way, that's the same way he's been with us. He's walked with us every step of the way. He has proven to be true. But this moment, they're at a moment of uncertainty. What does Jesus say? Listen to me. That I'm going before you. I know you don't know what's ahead and you don't know where you're journeying. He said, but I'm going before you. Can I tell you something? Before that next chapter of your life, listen to me, the Lord's already there. Before that new season of your life, listen to me, the Lord's already there. Before you get the doctor's news in 2020, the Lord's already there. Before you make the decision on what you're going to do about school or life or career or a job or college, listen to me, the Lord is already there. You say, I'm worried, I'm uncertain, I understand that, but the Lord is already there. The Lord is already there. He's already making a way. He's already taking care of it. Here you are. You say, I'm on this journey. I felt like I'm at a dead end. I don't know how to go forward. I can't go back. I'm scared to go left or right because, God, you've led me to the place I am. And there's one thing that I know. If I got where I am because of you, Lord, I can't change course. I can't turn back. I don't have the right nor the authority to be able to do anything different. Sometimes you got to learn just to be still. And be reminded that the Lord goes before you. It makes no difference what decision you have to make in the days ahead. Listen to me, the Lord goes before you. It makes no decision about the crossroads that you're going to be out. The Lord goes before you. Are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you? And here they are in a place of decision, circumstances. And I want to tell you what this scripture teaches me is this, is that circumstances don't affect God. Feelings don't affect God. Enemies don't affect God. Time does not affect God. Do you understand that events are found in Christ? Time is found in Christ. Are you, are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? We're so overwhelmed by uncertainty when the Lord has already promised 
I'm already there. Trying to figure out what to do, how to handle a situation. The Lord says, I'm already there. Notice, if you will, turn your Bibles for just a moment to Isaiah chapter number 52, verse number 12. The Bible says this in Isaiah 52 He said, For ye shall not go out with haste nor by flight, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you. That means the Lord is already there. He's never failed, never forsook, never walked away. He's already going to be there. But then he finishes and he says, And the God of Israel will be your re-reward. What's he saying, Brother Jason? Look up here. Not only is the Lord before you, but he's also behind you. Some of us are not worried about what's in front of us. Some of us are run, running forwards because we're scared of what's going to catch up with us. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? We're so scared to be able to slow down because we've got to face reality. I pulled this song out, this old hymn. You know the words, of course. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Here we are. We feel like we're at the end of something. Don't know what to do. God, how are you going to fix it? How are you going to turn it around? How are you going to change it? Lord, more so, God, I'm not interested in you changing it. Look at me. Lord, I'm interested in you changing me. It's me, God. I want you to change me. How do you, how do you get changed? Listen to what the old hymn says. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. You say, well, how do I learn to be still in a place of uncertainty? Turn your eyes to Jesus. Look to the Lord. Why? Because the Lord says, I go before you. He also says, if you go a little bit further, he says there in verse number 7, going back to the book of Matthew chapter 28, he says, but go, he go before you into Galilee. Now, they're in Jerusalem or maybe 80 to 100 miles away. Do you understand? That's a long ways away. But see, there was something significant. Listen to me and I'll move on. There's something significant about Galilee. That's where they were all from. That was their homes. That's, that's where they were comfortable. That was their, their, their personal place, if you will. And God says, I'm going to take you back there. And I'm going to teach you there. And I'm going to do something there. But now understand in context, what is Matthew chapter number 28 about? It's about the Great Commission. So we're not talking about here. We're talking about there. What is God saying? The Lord's saying that no matter what I choose for you or what I call you to do, I will always go before you. But there's something I must do first. Before you can ever do anything out there, I have to go to your personal place. And I have to do something in you, and I have to do something in your home, and I have to do something in your life, and I have to do something in your marriage, and I have to do something in your heart, because what I want to do through you is beyond your imagination. It's greater than you. And until I can ever work in your home and work close to your home, you're not going to be strengthened enough. You're not going to be strong enough. Your platform will not be what it needs to be. The foundation will not be as strong as you think it is. I have to work at home. And I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me. Everybody wants a pulpit. Everybody wants a ministry. Everybody wants to do something great for God. But you listen. God has to do His work on you. God has to stir your heart. God has to touch your heart. God has to change your heart. And when God will do something and in your heart, God will always do something through you. So not only does the Lord tell us in this journey that he'll go before us, but number two, notice if you will in verse number nine. Notice what he says, pick up on the words. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, listen to this. What did he say? Jesus says, look up here, behold. Jesus said, behold, disciples. What did he say? Jesus met them. The second thing I tell you about this journey is this. Not only will the Lord go before you, but the Lord will meet you where you are. Can I testify for a moment? Here recently, on my journey, I find myself 
looking for the Lord in very unique places. Yesterday, I sat down with Russ, and the Lord met me there. He reminded me, I'm still with you. There have been times I've been riding down the road and thinking about a thousand things, and all of a sudden, I get a phone call. Somebody talking and testifying or maybe a text message that says something. And that's the Lord just stopping me and saying, I'm meeting you right where you are. It does my heart good when the Lord slows me down and reminds me that I'm meeting you right where you are. I'll be honest with you. I want to be closer to the Lord than I am now. My shame is the fact that I know who I am and how undeserving I am. I long for the Lord's presence. I long for His peace, just like you. We long for His rest. And I'm not talking about the rest that you go and you work hard during the day and you know that food's going to be on the table because you make a decent paycheck and you've got a good... A good outlook on your finances. I'm not talking about that the family's healthy and you can rest because of that. Those are all blessings. Listen to me. I need the Lord. I want to hear His voice. I don't just want to pray and read my Bible. And read a proverb a day and say, well, I do my personal devotions. Can I tell you something? Just because you have personal devotions does not mean mean that you're meeting with the Lord. Do you want to know how the Lord met them there, why he did? I want you to notice, if you will, what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse number 9, And as they went, you know what that means? That when you and I are obedient, listen to me, to what God tells us to do, the Lord will meet us where we are. You say, God, I don't know how to deal with this. I, 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 don't, I don't understand this next step, and I don't see what's really coming on. God, I need you to be able to go before me, but Lord, I need to know that you're with me. I want you to be able to meet me. I'm at this crossroads, and God, I need to know that where I got is where you're going to be because I cannot make this decision without you. I cannot make this journey without you. God says, you never have to worry about me being there. I will always meet you there. But there's one thing you must do, and that's be obedient. One man told me, he said, I'd rather be obedient in the middle of a fiery furnace than be out of the will of God sitting in a peaceful valley. You think about that. You know, because you know when you got somewhere, the Lord can reveal himself. But you know how I got here, so God's going to give me the grace. God's going to give me the strength. God's gonna... But you know where the fear is? Is when you're on that, look up here, when you're on that rocky boat. And it wasn't the Lord that said, let us go to the other side. It was you that said, I'm getting out of here. And then you get on that boat and the waves begin to crash. And now you begin to say, did I make the right choice? Did I make the right decision? But as long as you and I live obedient to the Lord, no matter where we end up, listen, the Lord will always meet us there. You know, it's always good to have Bible. Listen to what John 7, 17 says. If any man, listen to this, will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. In other words, the Lord's saying, I'll teach you and show you what you need to know, but you're going to have to make your mind up to do what I tell you to do. You want God to help you this morning? You feel like you're walking in circles, you're in the middle of a, I don't know, maybe you feel like the children of Israel for 40 years, maybe not 40 per se, but just in your life, you just feel like you're on this journey and this is what you're doing, you're walking in circles. You go up. You plateau, you go down, you plateau, you go up, 
and you plateau and you continue doing the same thing and you always see the same thing. You say, Lord, why is it no different? Maybe it's because somewhere down the line we wasn't obedient when the Lord said stop, when the Lord said turn, so now all we're doing is going in the same circle. How do you know that the Lord meets you there when you're obedient? Notice the last few words of that verse, verse number 7, I mean verse number 9. The Bible says, and they, they say they worshipped. Did they not worship? Everybody say worship. 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 Here we go again. Well, I do my daily devotions, Brother Jason. I, I want to know the next chapter of my life. I want to know that I'm going to make it. I want to know that I'm in the center of God's will. I'm reading my Bible, reading the proverb, going to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I go to a Sunday school. I'm trying everything, Brother Jason. I have a devotion. I'm dedicated to the Lord. But just because you have a devotion don't mean you worship. I don't mean you worship. You know what the Bible says about Job? The Bible says that Job went and he worshipped. Because when Job worshipped, listen to this. In reality, he done lost it all. I would dare say Job probably didn't know who he was. His kids was gone. His wife was confused. All he possessed and all he known was finished. Look up here. How did he make it to the next chapter? The Bible said he worshipped. You know what Job teaches us? That when we get our eyes on what matters. That the Lord takes care of everything. But we have to put our eyes on him. And the only eyes... The only time you can get your eyes on the Lord the way you should is when you and I choose to worship the Lord for who He is. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, Brother Jason, that's not my issue today. I'm dealing with a lot of pain. Look up here. Let's make it practical for a minute. Tiff, if one of y'all come to the piano in a moment. Look, look up here. Look up here. Brother Jason, let, let's be honest. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not dealing with all this stuff. I got next year. But right now, I'm just dealing with a lot of emotions. I'm dealing with pain, I'm dealing with grief, I'm dealing with, with, with confusion, I'm dealing with some hurt. Can I tell you something? Whenever you see Mary and them, and they was at the very first of this chapter, the Bible says that they were literally in that place. And even though, listen, even though they were at a place of grief, when the Lord met them there, it changed things and it turned it around for them. Now, you could go a little bit further, and you could look at all those that was full of fear. The disciples did not know what was going on. They didn't know how to handle it. But when the Lord met them there, things changed. There was one in verse number 17. The Bible says that they worshiped again. That was the second time. And then it says, after that, and some doubted. Some of you might be sitting here doubting that the Lord knows what He's doing, doubting that the Lord cares, doubting that the Lord's got another plan, He's got another purpose, He's got another step, He's got another chapter, and you feel just like Thomas in the Bible. You're full of doubt. You've been in this journey. You've seen the miracles of God. You've felt His power, His touch. You've worshipped Him and honored Him. You have seen the miraculous hand of God. But today... You doubt. And these words are on your mind. Will the Lord meet me where I am? He met Thomas. You say, yeah, but Brother Jason, I'm not neither one of those. I'm Peter. I went back. I went back and fish. I went back to some things. I've kind of steered away, Brother Jason. I really wish the Lord would meet me. I desire His presence too. I want to walk with Him. I want to know that He's with me. I want to have that confidence and that boldness. I want to know that everything's all right. Listen. But I'm away. There's been some things. Can I tell you what the Lord done for Peter? He met him. He went to where he was. And Peter didn't even recognize him. 
How many times have we been in a place where we didn't even recognize the Lord, but He loved us so much that in grace and mercy, He didn't humiliate us? Listen to me. He didn't mock us. He didn't hurt us. He didn't blame us. He didn't accuse us. He loved us unconditionally. And the Lord met him there. Maybe you're in a place where things seem to be out of normal. I, I'm not meddling, I'm preaching. It's almost, I'm time done, okay? Just give me a second. Look up here. Maybe you're at that place, listen. Maybe you're at that place to where things are off track. Maybe it's not what you thought it would be. Maybe you're in Luke chapter number 24. You're the two disciples. You saw Jesus. Man, you heard Jesus. You was in his presence. But now you're walking along. Look up here. The journey of your life. You're just kicking rocks. Say, Lord, I... I didn't think it was supposed to be this way. Then the disciples thought, Jesus ain't going to die. He ain't supposed to be dead. And just because they didn't know what the Lord known, they automatically just gave up. Man, they just quit living by faith. They, they didn't. They were so spoiled. They were so spoiled and blessed. To be in the presence of the Lord where things were good. That when they got to those lonely moments. They said, I sure wish the Lord would meet me here. And all of a sudden. The Lord showed up. When they were complaining about life not being what they thought it should be. The Lord just showed up. He began to speak. And they recognized the Lord. And on that journey, as they had their hell low, they kicked up the dirt, walking down that road, feeling like all that they believed in some kind of fantasy all their dreams all their hopes it was some kind of figment of their imagination in the middle of their pity party hopeless lifeless no joy no bragging about what the Lord let them see. Not thinking about how God had been good to them. Not thinking about the people that now they had known and the joys that they had, the experiences. Not thinking about the comfort of the Lord Jesus in their life. And not one time, but many times. Not thinking about the miracles that the Lord let them see. But in the middle of their pity party, they walked along that road. Wonder where is it in? And then Jesus came to where they were. You listen to me. I don't care where you are on this journey. Grief, fear, frustration, anger, doubt, backslid on God. I want to remind you what the Lord's saying to you today. You might not hear his voice because the noises are, sound, are drowning him out. What's he saying, Brother Jason? He's saying, behold. Brother Wayne, he's saying, look at me. I'm not going nowhere. I never lied to you. I never turned my back on you. And no matter where you are, I love you so much. That's exactly where I'm going to come. 
my third truth and I'm done. Verse number 20 says, Lo, I'm finished. I am with you always. Not only do we see that the Lord goes before you in this journey, the Lord will meet you along the way. Number three, the Lord stays with you until the end. I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse 20. It don't say, I will be with you always. We've misquoted that many a time. You know what he says, Brother Junior? I am with you. Lord, maybe it sounds like this. Lord, when are you going to show up? When am I going to feel your presence again? When am, Lord, I'm getting tired of me. Maybe you said that. I know everybody. I know everybody else is getting tired of it. Lord, I'm getting tired of me. Doubt, grief, frustration, overwhelming, lack of worship. Lord, I'm tired of me. Lord, when are you going to show up? God said, it ain't that I will be there. And he didn't say I was there. He said, I am with you always. Hey, Elijah. When you're up under that juniper tree asking God just to take your life, was the Lord there? Yeah, he was there. About a month ago, I'm done. About a month ago, I went to go see my, my mentor. We talked a little bit. About seven, maybe about six years ago, after I started pastor, about a year and a half, he and I began to talk. We looked at our life kind of like giants. And he had me start keeping journals. Some of you might keep a journal. He had me keep a journal. And in that journal, what we would do is we'd begin to write down all kinds of different things. We'd write down stuff that had happened, write down feelings, Word of God, application, all kinds of stuff. And there'd be one giant, and then we'd go to another giant in my life. There'd be something to happen, there'd be something else. Same principles always stay the same. If you know 1 Samuel chapter number 17, David and Goliath. When you read out that chapter, you actually find out the, sto- the battle was not between David and Goliath. The battle was between army and armies. They came together. So there's one principle that I learned about me and my giants. Not every giant comes in my life is because of something I've done. Sometimes it's just something the Lord chooses me for. Not only that, but also when you read that out, you realize too that you can't do what you think you need to do and everybody else thinks you need to do. You always have to approach it the way God tells you to approach it. You with me? Not only that, but also there's going to be some people that will be on your side and some people that will not be on your side. That's the way David's life was. Not only that, but there's also going to be some times too that whenever you get the victory, you're going to realize you wasn't the one who defeated the giant. It was God. Because when David, when he hit him in the head with that rock, the Bible says that he hit him in the head, head but, in his head, but he fell on his face. That means it wasn't David that defeated the giant. It was God who done it. So every one of my notebooks are new giants. Bubba, I got, I got books that I just I write in. And every time I get a new giant, I get a new book. About a month ago, it's 1st of November. We was talking about a giant. Still talking about it. We were sitting down there and we was writing some things down. I left that day. He reached behind his desk. <laughs> and he gave me a brand new book. He handed it to me. It was a notebook. I said, what's that for? He's never done that before. He said, Jason, just like there's been new chapters after every other giant. He said, God told me to remind you there's going to be another chapter of days ahead. Don't stop where you are. Keep writing. So, so I took that book. <laughs> 
and I hadn't wrote the first word yet because I really don't know what's over in Galilee. I really don't know. I'm still walking along the road of Maus on this journey. I'm here to tell you this morning by the grace of God and by the word of God, listen to me. With God, there's always another chapter. So I don't know what the doctors have told you. I don't know what your wife, your husband, your ex-wife, your ex-husband, your children, your family, your friends, your friends in the ministry, your preacher, other preacher friends, your enemies. I don't know what nobody's told you. I don't know what the devil's told you. I don't even know what you've been telling yourself. But I want to tell you something based upon the Bible. There's another chapter. There's always another chapter with the Lord. Don't turn your eyes off of Jesus. Whether it's grief, doubt, sorrow, pain, frustration. Won't you just make your mind up this morning. God, I'm human. And you know me, so I'm not going to paint a picture that you can't see. But Lord, I want you to know that I want to follow you if you'll keep helping me. You're not going to do it by accident. This journey is full of ups and downs. Downward and upward. Downward and upward. All you and I have to do is this. Make the choice to make the next step. Father, I love you. 